Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Eat Me Question Everything. Today, we have Fern from Fueled by Fern. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very passionate about this. So any chance I get to talk about it, I'm always excited. Yeah, I, I am like the fitness. That's like my passion in life, too. So let's just get into it. You have kind of an interesting background with sports and athletics. So I'd love to let you go and tell us all about that. Okay. So yeah, I, from a young kid, wanted to be an NFL player, you know, I'm a pro athlete and <clears throat> ran into trouble in high school and got injured in, in, in college and basically found myself not being athletic enough and just so many like barriers and things that were in my way. And I, I, I ended up pushing through that, um, starting a gym called with, with my, with my partner, um, Ben Patrick, knees over toes guy. We, we started ATG, Athletic Truth Group. And that kind of was the beginning of the journey. That was now, I think, eight, nine years ago. And my own struggles with not only training, how to get more athletic, but also how to lose body fat and, and having, you know, energy. And because as a football player, you're training twice a day on the field and then also hitting the gym. So I used to try to eat all these carbs, and all this, right? And and then I would get fatigued and I was having all these issues. And I was getting weight and it was, it was a very interesting journey that took me many years, but I found out I'm very grateful for that because I, I've learned so much from it. Okay. So, so that training with Charles Poliquin, um, if you guys don't know who that is, he's a, he's passed away, but he was considered the greatest Olympic strength training coach ever. And, um, yeah, I ended up making it to a, a low level, but got paid to play football, um, you know, in a, in a little minor league. And it was sort of a dream at 28 years old. That doesn't usually happen. So it was something that I was proud of. But now I've taken all that information and like basically making it. How do I simplify it so that the masses can gain from it? Yeah. So first, like my first question is, because this is we had a conversation with um uh, keto savage, uh, what Courtney, what's his, do you know who I'm talking about? Um, Rob, um, Sykes. Rob yeah, Sykes. Yeah. he's a bodybuilder and he has a pretty popular book and he created the keto brick. And he said the same thing. Like when he was younger eating like this very carb heavy diet and he was training, he got injured all the time and his recovery was garbage. So were you eating like a standard American diet though? Is like that what we were doing when you were getting, you know, injured? And I, I have a funny story. Yeah. When I was 15, 16, going to these training camps and all during, you know, on the off season and then even in college, I was eating pizza like two, three yeah. times. I mean, it was because I, when you become carb dependent, like heavy dependency like that, and your body's not metabolically like it's just optimal, you, you, now when you don't have any carbs, you, you, you go crazy. And so you right. tend, I find, and even with all my clients, I've trained thousands of people at this point, it's you be, those cravings really kick in. And so then you don't just have the healthy carbs, fruit and white rice. You end up going to the pizza and the bread yeah. and like you binge. So yes, I was definitely doing that. And it was, it was affecting me. Well, and it's like, it's, everyone thinks like, oh, carbs are bad. And when they say that they're talking about like the white rice and the sweet potatoes and that stuff but that's like 90 percent uh, like that's not what people are eating they're uh. eating the pizza and the fried rice and the just like the the garbage so I think that that's like a lot of people think of the carnivore space like oh you demonize carbs no we demonize the carbs that most people are eating which is not white rice or brown rice it's pizza correct and I I tend to what, what I do with my clients, particularly athlete, like again, an athlete is somebody who needs to go through a little bit of a detox. I love the carnivore diet as a one, like a hard or strict kind of carnivore diet is a one month to three month sort of detox. It's a reset for your body. Your body kind of relearns how to burn fat for energy and, and it allows the body to heal from these, from all this damage. And then I slowly like week by week will implement a, you know, like what I personally do is I add some raw dairy and then maybe some avocados, you know, some coconut meat. And then after a month of that, then I start adding some fruit. Okay. Some simple fruit. And then some people can never even get to the white rice and sweet potatoes because their bodies just, they, they start to blow up. They, they don't have the insulin sensitivity for it. So I kind of monitor it, but 
the max I would ever tell someone to go is that sweet, you know, that sweet potato, white rice. And, and you have to be careful. Some people get there and then they now start craving the bread. Okay. So you have to find what works for you and what keeps you not craving. Yeah, that's a good point because that's kind of like where I would go, like incorporating those would be a slippery slope too. Mm -hmm. And I'd be driving through and getting a McFlurry every day. Mm -hmm. Um, so what does your diet look like now then? So, so I did three weeks of, I wouldn't call it straight carnivore, but relaxed strict carnivore. Okay. So I was eating meat, meat and eggs is, is how I call consider my carnivore diet. So I was eating meat and eggs for three weeks, shredded off. I mean, instantly my body just uh, week by week was changing. Okay. Then I started working out very hard. I started getting back into shape. So then I implemented a week or two, I think it was about 10 days of an avocado, like a half avocado a day. And I was having like four to eight ounces of raw milk. Now, get really quick. Dairy is a very interesting thing. I do not approve of non-raw dairy, like fully. But then raw dairy, I'm like, you can have it. So it's it's a it's a pretty hard line for me on that one. Like you have to go the raw. But, oh well, it's still milk. Mm -mm. It's very different. Um, so I did that for about ten days, and now just. Actually, that yesterday I started, I had some oranges and now I'm having like blueberries. I like simple, like blueberries, oranges, watermelon. And I, oh, here's the key with this. I only have that stuff immediately following a workout. And that, this is where like the fitness and we, we start to get into more of the athletic side of things is your body's sensitivity and requirements go up once you start actually working out very hard and it there's not the same level of damage. Okay. After a workout. And mm -hmm. so that's how I look at it. And, um, again, for most people, like my father, 70 years old, and he's on a strict carnivore for, I think 10 months. I have a video on it. I mean, it's unbelievable. The transformation he's done. He doesn't have carbs. He doesn't need them. He's 70 years old. He does work out, but it, it's a little different, right? But I'm 33 and I'm, I have like high level athletic workouts and I'm playing basketball two hours with professionals and things like this. And it's, you know, I've earned my carbs. I talk about earning your carbs. If you go for a, a brisk 15 minute walk, I would say probably don't need the carbs. Okay. So if you do a CrossFit workout, okay, maybe you've earned a couple of bananas, you know? So now I'm curious. Oh, sorry, David. Go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you, do you feel like your body needs them? Like, do you feel like you need that energy or do you just want to eat them because they're delicious. Cause you know, you, I see so many different stories where everyone's like, Oh yeah, I work out hard. So I do have some carbs. And then you see like the carnivore, like the strict ones. And they're like, Oh, no matter what I do, I'm still going to be zero carbs. So what makes you, I guess, implement or include those. So it's a, it's a good point to survive. You do not need the carbs. This, this is the truth. I, I I'm a firm believer in that carnivore. If you just were thinking, pure survival and for long term honestly probably just steak and eggs you'd, you'd be you'd be pretty set now for me it's a balance between i don't do it for the sweet or for any of that i do it because at my level of training i just put it that way because i don't know everyone's level of training right? but but at my level of training when i have the carbohydrates and we're talking small amount i'm still having way less carbs than a normal diet like half of that, right? But when I have that little bit of carbs after my workout, I recover and perform better. But again, we're not talking about brisk, light workouts. We're talking a little bit more, you know, I squat 405 pounds all the way down. Like, and we're talking, you know, very in high intensity type workouts. So if your aim, if you're an athlete and you're trying to perform better in a sport or in the gym, and you're metabolically healthy already. Okay. You're in, see, th there's several factors here. Then I think you can earn your carbs. If you have to repair and you have some, some issues and you're overweight, possibly things like this, then probably just don't, don't even mess with that. Okay. It makes, me, like, it makes me wonder what I should do. So I'm working with a trainer. Um, mm -hmm. and 
I will like toot my own horn right here. My, my, my transformations are pretty, pretty intense. Um, but I'm still like not there, but I do very, like very heavy lifting for, for a lady. I'm not oh. 400 pounds. Yet. <laughs> yeah. It's all relative. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but it makes me wonder because right now my focus is usually on protein, like hitting that protein because I want to build muscle. Um, but I'm like wondering, do I need, cause I'm pretty, I would say 98% is just like carnivore. Um, right. I'm pretty strict, not like the strictest, like Courtney is more strict than me, but it makes me wonder like if I, like today I had a super intense workout, like should I have like maybe half of a sweet potato for that recovery? Cause I, I can already feel it in my bones. Like I'm going to be sore as I'll get out tomorrow. Right. So I'm like, at what point do I kind of compromise the strict carnivore because I am metabolically healthy and I'm at a good weight for recovery and muscle. You, do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's Absolutely. just like, where Absolutely. is that? Because my trainer is awesome, but he's more focused on like, Hey, you get your protein, whatever else you want to do is up to you. I just need you to get this protein in. And that's like his priority. So I, like, it makes me wonder for myself and what I'm trying to achieve. Like, what do I do? You know, not to ask for your advice, but like, okay. I mean, what, what, I, okay. So I, I'm a trainer and have trained people. So definitely protein is king, right? Pro yeah. That is, you have to hit that. Don't ever compromise protein and your new, you know, for carbs. Now, if somebody is at a body weight that they want to be at, and they, again, are trying to perform better, I would say to try it. I would say throw in, and we're talking, so what do you weigh? So right now I'm 144. My trainer has the goal of getting me, like I'm in a cut though. Like I'm in a, what we would define as like a cut and a calorie deficit. So one 135 is kind of the goal, but then I would gain more, like gain weight back again. Wow. That would be like the, the minimum. Okay. So I would say, you know, you, you, you start to play with it, right? You, you could go half body weight, but again, those to say 70 carbs, which is a couple bananas, something like right, this, right. blueberries and whatever, like that would be immediately after your workout. Right. And okay. It be, and it would be alone. So this is something I do tell also carnivores. Let's say they do cheat. Let's say they, they mess up or they're going to cheat. It's a special occasion. Okay. And for whatever reason, they're like, okay, uh, it's a wedding and I'm going to have a piece of cake. Don't eat anything else around it. Like, your, so the pro, so a lot of meat, uh, these studies, these studies, I, where they say <laughs> meat is bad for you, right? Uh, no, first of all, you're eating meat in a burger, which has bread and vegetables right, right. and all this seed oil. So, but by the way, yes, the meat does not get digested when you mess up the acidity of your stomach with these other alkaline based foods. So if you're going to have cake and drink and these things, do not eat meat, <laughs> like you actually want to eat nothing. You want to just isolate that cheat meal, leave it alone. Let the body, a little, a little poison never, you know, you, your body's designed to handle a little poison. So get it out, then resume your normal diet. So same thing with the fruit, right? Like if you're going to have a carb meal, like have it right after your workout, don't also eat like a giant steak with those fruit, because I think that, that you could potentially get into like you know, messing the digestion of that steak. Yeah. And we actually talk about that quite a bit about how like you should never, cause I'm very outspoken about this. I've gotten like, kind of, I don't know, people don't like it when I talk bad about fruit, but you don't want to eat like a high fat meal with a high glucose meal, you know, um, a high sugar meal. Cause it's just, we're not designed to have both sources at the same time. That's why I get kind of feisty when people are like, Oh, I eat fruit with my like ribeye. I'm like, don't do it. Don't do whatever. I, I, I agree. I agree. Like if you're out in the wild, like a primal, right. And you, the, the fruit would be something you would find maybe a month or two of the year. And it was like a special, like it, you weren't also hunting, eating the meat and then going to that trip. It, it was, they were separated occasions. That, that's how I see it. And that's what makes sense to me. Right. Right. Yeah. So go ahead, Courtney. No, I just quickly want to point out. And like you said, like, you know, 70 carbs of bananas or whatever, like that's still considered low carb, you know, like 
Exactly. I mean, you're not in keto probably at that, but like when I wasn't keto and I was doing low carb, like I was like under like 75. And so that, yeah, that can still, you know, work for some people. It's not having like four or 500 grams of carbs and sugar, like someone else is doing right now. Correct. Right. That trail. <laughs> that was a little snide remark there. Sorry, I know. I'm, I'm just gonna drink my coffee. I'm I'm a little feisty today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Like you came. You were eating a standard diet. At what point? Where? Because I've been following you for a while. What point were you like? Oh yeah, animal animal based carnivore is like the way. Like what was that? What, I like to ask people. What was that like? The light bulb in uh -huh. your head. Yeah. So I have been, <laughs> this is a kind of funny start. Actually, I, I kind of like it. It may get, I've gotten some hate for it, but I'm going to say it. So it was, I think really like five, seven years ago, I, I was still eating too much cheat meal, too much junk, but it was when I realized that protein is king. And I, and I used to, <laughs> and I did keto for, for 12 weeks strict and I was having the, the, the heavy veggie and meat. Right. And I was, I, I, I did good. Like I, I felt some improvement from that sugar detox, but I was getting bloated every time I ate. Mm -hmm. It was killing my stuff. So I knew that wasn't it. And I basically before that had not really had any vegetables and I haven't really eaten vegetables. Like let's say part of my diet for not, not that I haven't had it occasionally, but I haven't had vegetables as part of my diet for like seven years and people freak out. You don't I like them. I, I don't like them. Like yeah. it's not even that I like it. Sometimes I would for I would have it like once a week or something, and it would it would upset my stomach. And I just I used to call salad and bread poor people's food. Like if you go and that's what I get attacks for. That's like kind of rude, you know. But I was like, my friend was like, Hey, you want a salad? I'm like, no, that's for poor people. <laughs> and it was like, what did the kings eat? They ate the meat and fruit. Yeah, And they passed out the bread and the lettuce to the poor. Like let's say we go back to the Roman civilization. That's, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the more there's even studies of showing like, you know, lower income poverty type um, uh, areas, they, 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 they get, they eat more bread and they have more over, you know, they have more obesity and more heart issues. And it, it's just, and I think it's whatever, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. So I think that's kind of designed You keep people, unhealthy you keep them you're speaking your courtney's language right yeah, now let me go grab quality. my my tin foil hat real quick that is, <laughs> that is me because it, well, you know the conspiracy theories keep coming true so <laughs> yeah yeah exactly they're conspiracy until 10 years later oh it's oh found, guess what we just found out Doctor, and we've known that for yeah. a long time dr chafee just said that like we talked love, to him he said that. um but you're right like the the people love to talk about scurvy like when you're meat heavy like oh you're gonna get vitamin c deficiency look at all the pirates and it's like well the pirates who are the low men on the totem pole yeah they got scurvy because they were eating little bit dried biscuits but like the drinking, probably like crazy and then the officers like the high-ranking ones they were eating jerky and stuff and they didn't get vitamin c deficiency because they were eating meat you know like it because it's got trace levels of meats i mean vitamin c so yeah and, and so really quickly on the, on the like micronutrient topic, right? I, like I said, relaxed. I am a believer in a multivitamin if it's very high quality. I do personally take, I kind of cycle on and off it depending on my diet, but I, I basically, my, my father has had a vitamin company for 40 years. So I've grown up taking, there's like, I call them the five basics, okay? Because I believe that the quality of food in general in society now is can be so deficient that it may be smart, not required, but maybe smart to supplement that. Um, <clears throat> and for me, it's a multivitamin. It's sort of like a shotgun and I don't have to eat 10 pounds of kale to get the, <laughs> the same level of, of vitamin from that one multivitamin. So I do that. I take vitamin D3 and K2 because we're not in the sun as much as we used to be. I take an omega-3 because the quality of meat, I believe, is degraded, relatively speaking. That's where, of course, grass-fed becomes important. But but for those who can't necessarily afford grass-fed or, or, or you're in a situation where you can't take a, a, a good quality omega-3, and you're going to supplement that. Um, I mean, those are my three main ones. 
something I like to also tell people is when people are switching to a heavy protein, uh, animal-based diet is, uh, HCL with pepsin. It's a, it's, it's an extract that basically is your stomach acid. And so a lot of people go, Oh, well, I eat meat and I get really like tired and my stomach hurts. That's because you've damaged your stomach. Mm -hmm. So give it a little aid, help it adjust. And in a few weeks, you'll probably be totally fine. But yes, in the beginning, you might want to take HCL to, to help with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with all of that too. I'm interested in like your, um, cause I know that you just started your supplement company. I, so especially as someone who is obsessed with working out and I know I do take a couple of supplements now I've just started. What about for performance? What, what are you recommending for your clients and just people in general for, for performance as someone who obviously feels passionate enough to start their own, you know? So a couple things. One, again, I wanted to have a supplement, a sports performance supplement line since I was 16 years old. I was in high school, like designing products. You can ask my dad. I literally used to buy like 20 different amino acids and different things, and like mix them. They would taste like total crap. But you know, <laughs> that was, that was my, I've been passionate about that. So the number one is honestly electrolytes. I, I cannot stress, like, I think, I, I, I think 90% of the population or more is, is dehydrated to some degree, right? Um, so hydration and electrolytes is just, that's why I came out with my first product is a hydration product. Now I added kind of to make it a two in one, the amino acids, the essential amino acids. So again, for people who aren't eating enough protein and meat or, or starting to get into that or somebody who's working out very hard, your requirements go up. So there's, there's many angles for it. It's also a great little supplement for if you're trying to cut, right? So instead of having, a, you know, you can skip a meal, save, you know, 600 calories. You're having only 10, 20 from this drink, yet it fuels you and keeps you energized for your workout. So that's what I'm pretty passionate about. I think that's like the number one, just sort of shotgun performance supplement that everyone should take, whether you work out or not. You wake up, I have a scoop during my workouts. I have two scoops, Okay. Um, after that creatine, creatine is found in red meat. We know this absolutely epic for strength training. If you're eating two, three pounds of meat, you don't need it. If you're not, which I would say most people aren't, it's a good supplement. Um, and after that, I mean, those are the two like go to off the top of my head. I mean, there's, there's levels, right? You can keep getting that extra percent, that extra percent. I mean, a good pre-workout that's stimulant free, in my opinion, with like good amino acids that open up your arteries and for blood flow, I think is a good thing. Um, but yeah. I, so my trainer has been trying to get me to take pre-workout for months now. And I was like, no, 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 no. I took it today. And I was like, like, yeah. I was like, I, like, I know the calories on my watch aren't accurate, but like even the difference in like, I know they're inaccurate, but just like seeing how much more I was able to push myself. I was like, yeah, like this is going to be a dick thing. So I, I agree with that. I also, I think it's really interesting because we talked with Rob Sykes about creatine. Um, I think most people who are strength training can benefit from taking creatine because most people aren't eating enough protein as it is. So oh. My question for you then is protein. What about, because I've been drinking a protein shake because I have like a heavy fat um, uh, focused diet. So I've kind of had to shift my priorities and I have seen a huge difference. But what about like a protein supplement and what do you recommend as far as um, body, because most people don't know this body weight into your converting it into your macros and consuming right. protein. So, okay. So, so two parts. So the, the macros one, it's very easy. There's some science. It's more specific. Eat a gram per pound of body weight. Yeah. Just keep it simple, please. You, you can go point A. I got it. There are ranges. Women may need a little, but guess what? It's not going to do any damage eating a little more. And it's, if anything, potentially going to actually accelerate your metabolism more. Okay. And Protein. yeah. Sorry, let me just clarify because I've been told is it like your goal? Like, say you're very overweight, would you be eating your goal weight in protein? It's a good question, but the funny thing is, is if someone say 300 pounds, um, which I had some, I had a client recently do that. Believe it or not, I had a meeting close to 300, 
And again, it just fills them up so much and it, it eliminates the, the cravings. It increases their metabolism. This guy was about 300 pounds and I was having him eat. I think he ended up, you know, his target was 300, but he was hitting over 250. So let's say an average of 270 was about his average. I mean, he shredded 30 pounds in a month. I mean, it was just unbelievable because he was like, I'm not even hungry for the, the, the junk at night anymore. You know what I mean? And, and all the science shows that, you know, your metabolism goes up and all this stuff. So, um, there based on body weight. Anyways, to answer, uh, answer your question is, um, to set the goal for your, your goal weight is okay too. That, that I mean, I just choose, I kind of depends on the person, but either one of those is, is works in my opinion. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm at 144 right now. And my goal is to be at like 130, 135. I eat 150 grams still. Yeah, like, I, that's I, when I, and I will like, I have to force myself to eat enough calories sometimes. Cause like I have a minimum, like you should not go below this because of how hard I do try and train. And sometimes I'm like, man, I got to eat two or three more spoonfuls because I'm like, I'm so satiated by how much protein I'm eating now. Whereas before, I mean, I probably have always been under eating, but now that I'm cognizant of it, I'm like, holy smokes. Like I really got to, I got to push myself to eat because it's just, it is so satiating. Yeah. And it will be healthier. A very common problem with, with particularly with women is because in their smaller bodies. And so it's easier to fall into this problem is the under eating mm -hmm. be shocked at how many times I give a, a meal plan to a, to a female who who's I'm trying to lose weight and I've been stuck. And they're like, this is double what I eat. I'm like, right. Let's try it. Right. It's all 90% protein. Right. Mm -hmm. They they're like, I've lost 10 pounds. I don't understand. I'm eating twice as much as I was eating before, but I've lost 10 pounds. It, it's because you need an engine An engine needs fuel. So if you just keep, taking the fuel out and you expect to be able to run fast, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And I feel right. like we have in our brains, like that 1200 calorie to lose weight. Like, like that was ingrained in me just from, you know, outside sources growing up. And it's like, all right, you want to lose weight, then you keep it under 1200 calories. And it's like, that just doesn't work. It's like your body yeah. wants to hold onto it. <laughs> yeah, I have. So it depends on the size of the woman and stuff and, uh, and in the man, but I have some, there's some, I have some, for me, it's almost like never under 1200. So it's like the reverse of that, right? So of course, look, calorie, calories in, calories out matter. But what, what gets lost in that is that the type of calorie in determines the amount of calories out. That's, right. that's, that's that simple. So I have, I have two questions. Um, I, I have heard, I had heard and read something um, that there was a study done recently within the past year that said, if you consume, this is for people who are tracking their macros. If you consume your protein goal in a day, the other sources, and obviously we know quality matters, but say I'm eating 150 grams a day of protein. The rest of my, my, the rest of my calories can come from where I Ever, and it tends to show the same results, whether you're eating, like, do you get what I'm saying? So I do. like, I do. If, if someone is, I'm, my other calories are coming from fat because I'm a car, you know, I'm heavily animal based, but yeah. someone else who might be carbohydrate fueled instead of fat fueled, they're showing that as long as you eat your calorie, your grams for protein, the weight loss doesn't matter. Have you like seen that at all? This is, a, this is a field. Um, so, so let me, let me put it this way. If I ate, I eat about, I eat over 200 grams of protein. My minimum hard, I'm like 205, 210. I, I'm usually having 225 to 250 protein personally, but my hard minimum is 200. If I eat two, two pounds of, of, you know, filet mignon. So I got my, my protein and then I ate, would that be like seven Snickers a day to fill up the rest of my calories? <laughs> Do you think they did a study for two months, three months? Sure. Well, let's find out in 10 years how you do after right, eating right, Snickers. Right. I, I just, that's where I love the name of your podcast, Question Everything. These studies, oh, there are studies from Coca-Cola that said sugar was better for you than any. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, look at this government funded study. I posted it on my story the other day. Lucky Charms is one of the healthiest foods you can eat. So that's, 
I don't know that study specifically, so no, no, no personal attack to them, but it's like, careful, because that could be the same people doing this government study saying that red meat is literally the least healthy food you can eat and Cheerios and Lucky Charms, for God's sake, is is considered super healthy, better than eggs, better than everything, right? It's like, give me a break. All about the and money. Then, go ahead. No, I was saying it's all about the money for them. Absolutely. Look, a healthy person, they don't make any money on a healthy person. A sick person, there's just, I think this was a study that I like to believe in is um, they say like a, the, the average sick person spends like elderly, I think it was like five to $50,000 a year. Now this is through medical, obviously through insurance. They get basically like close to $50,000 a year for a sick person. So they want you sick, but not dead. That's where, that's where they have all the drugs to keep you alive, but they'll keep you sick with all the, with all the nutrition guidelines that they give you. So a healthy person spends from zero to $500 a year. So again, um, <laughs> I, I just, yeah, those studies to me, it's like, it's too short term. We don't know what exactly they were eating. It's just too many variables there. And this is like, I mean, Courtney has a pretty big TikTok following and all the comments are like, but the study, studies about red meat show otherwise. And I mean, it's crazy that people, you, when we say like, hey, those studies aren't really like gauged in a really good way. They're not conducted in a super efficient and accurate way. It's like, it's peer reviewed. This is, the, and it's just because something is peer reviewed does not mean it was done. I mean, what is it? The study of, what is it? What does Dr. Bart K say? He says like human studies are so inaccurate, no matter how perfect you try and get them to be done. And everything is pretty much e even like carnivore studies. Like you really can't gauge it. Well, here's my thought on that is, is first of all, yeah. Were they, were they being watched all day? Do you know what they had at night? And first of all, I don't actually believe they've ever done a carnivore did they take anthony chafee or sean baker and did a study with those type of level of commitments to carnivore versus the vegan or versus the they have when they say a meat-based diet they're just talking about a they're talking about mcdonald's they're talking about eating right like carbs and bread with that meat as we were talking about earlier it it does not take a carnivore and compare it to they haven't done that and then you know, and did you make sure that guy was actually eating carnivore, right? So there's, that just doesn't make sense to me. And, and yeah, those studies are so potentially inaccurate and you have to be very, you have to question it, right? You have to really look into those things. And then uh, to tie off the concept on that is in the end, it's going to come down to what works for you. I, I really am a big believer in this. It's like, what's true for you is true for you. Like you have to, you can read everything, try it. Try a strict carnivore, try a primal, which I consider is like the carnivore with a little bit of fruit, you know, and then go try it. If you really wanted to do it, go try vegan. I've tried, you know, I tried vegan for a week, like, the, like five years ago. How much did you hate it? <laughs> it was the worst. I mean, I was like, what is this? Like, it was like, I was bloated 24 seven. I mean, it was ridiculous. I just was like, I'm sorry, this can't be the long-term answer. Now for my vegans out there, because I've actually helped people, vegans, with meal plans. I actually know how to make a meal plan for a vegan, if you know, to improve your vegan journey or whatever, if that's what you want. <clears throat> the one thing I will say that I will, it's actually an article I have coming out soon, is carnivores and vegans have more in common than they would like to think. And it comes down to one common denominator. They both believe in not eating processed foods. Mm -hmm. And I think if you cut out processed foods, like truly you're 80% of the way on any journey you go. And then from there, obviously we say, oh, it's clearly this way. And it's, you know, your protein and you can whatever, but they at least do have that, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Some, of and I, <laughs> some of them are real nuts. I mean, so. yeah, Oreos, are vegan. Oreos is not vegan, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So there are, I got, I have so many questions. So one, I, I, and then we can get back to like what you've seen with your clients, but I, we talked, do you know who Tyler Fullerton is? I'm not sure. He's, he's got a big TikTok following too. He's pretty big over there, but he um, is a
trainer does his supplements and he helps like a ton of people too. And he had commented and I've also been watching his content for a really long time. So I have some like rapport with him, but his biggest pet peeve is when people say like, Oh, you only want to lose one pound a week or whatever that standard is. What is your philosophy? Because you just said that you had a client lose. I mean, if some trainers, if you tell them I lost 30 pounds in a month, they're going to go, holy shit. That's, you know, that's so unhealthy. And right. he's like, no, your body will lose. As long as you're eating enough food, your right. body will drop it at the rate that it wants to. And just let it go. As long as you're eating enough food, is that, that kind of your mentality as well? Absolutely. I mean, I, Again, how can you determine that? It's so, it's so unique. Every body, every human body is different to some degree, right? So it's like, how can you say that? Oh, only one pound now. And first of all, when you have these giant drops, a lot of this is obviously going to be this water, but also people go, well, it's just water weight. Why am I holding 20 pounds of water weight? It's called inflammation. Like, you're right. I'm glad I lost a 20 pound weight vest of me, even if it was water. So yes, you eat the right amount of calories via protein first quality after of, of the rest of the food. Um, and let the body do what it's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a lot of people who are like spent on that though. Like you're like, Oh, I dropped this amount of weight this quickly. And they're like, Oh my God, you know? So I, I, I always like think like, well, if I'm eating 1700 to 2000 calories a day, that's like a lot of food for most people, you know, cause people are under eating and I'm still losing a ton of weight. Like as long as I have the energy, then what does it matter? So yeah, exactly. Like I said, it's water, it's this, it's that like it, I don't even care about the scale. Obviously body fat percentage is the truest mm -hmm. form of, of actually losing weight or body fat. So, or, or yeah, uh, losing fat. So that's really what matters. But eat, yeah, if your body happened to lose more than a pound a week, yeah, it, it's, it's again, just if you're getting enough nutrients through your food and you're getting enough protein, it, it just doesn't matter. Now, do you cut in bulk? Is that, but I, you, I, is that like your thing or not? I'm, I'm, I, so I used to do that. Okay. Football. I, I, but I very quickly caught on that this is crap. It's not, it's incorrect. So there's never to me an excuse to gain a bunch of fat for the hopes of gaining this much muscle more. It, it becomes now th there is cal. I, I don't like to, I basically don't like the name bulk. There is a concept though, a real concept of, okay, you eating a little surplus to optimize, again, performance in the gym, performance on a field. If, you, if you're if you a football player and you're, you say you're coming out, you're in high school senior and you're 185 and you need to get to 200, you got to eat a little extra. You want to gain a little weight. Some of this will be, if you do it right, you gain some fat which is never useful. I mean, fat doesn't make you run faster. It doesn't, you obviously need your base amount for health, but like, I don't need extra weight vests. Mm -hmm. But the little surplus can potentially, basically what it does is it makes it easier to train harder and to gain that muscle. But you have to be, you know, the ideal scene is like you, you only have a very little extra. So you're not actually gaining too much. No, uh, people abuse that. People abuse that. How would you do that? Because like, I'm like thinking I'm so, I'm so selfish and like asking all these questions okay. for myself. I should have waited at the end, but like, I'm in a deficit now and it's, it's for me, it's intense and it's, I'm still eating 1700 to 1900 calories a day. And I'm like a pretty small person, but I'm wondering what am I going to do when I hit that 130, 135 range? And I'm happy because I don't want to keep losing. Like that's not my goal at all. So it would just, in, do you do a surplus just in like protein and fat? Like, what am I supposed to eat? Because my trainer's good, but he is not a carnivore guy. So like he, you know, he doesn't address it like that. So, so do you mean, sorry. Oh, like Devin, like, are you asking like how to like be in maintenance mode then? But I want to gain muscle. Like I want to hit that um, low as like far as my body, like leanness. But then I want to like bulk and and you'll get like bulk in the sense that then I want to like buff up. You know what I mean? Also add more, opt optimally add muscle. So 
Yeah, the amount of calories you're having is impressive. That's very good if you're still losing weight. That's amazing. That means your your horsepower is out the roof. That's very good, first of all. I want to say that. Two, um, when you get to the weight you want to get to, that's kind of where we were talking about earlier where, okay, throw in a what's 50, right? An extra couple hundred calories now from those carbs. Okay. Again, because it sounds like you're pretty driven on the on that performance side of things, right? Right, so right. That should potentially help the performance. Again, this is not for longevity. This is not for necessarily even health. This is for performance. It is a little bit, they're connected, but it is a little different field, right? So, um, so that's where, you know, where that comes into play, right? And, and whenever you do make the shift from a cut to a maintain to a bulk or whatever you want to call it, be very gradual about it. Where okay. people go wrong is let's say they're on eating 1500 calories. Like, okay, I hit 135, 2200, 2500. Your metabolism needs time to adjust. Okay. So I say go up a hundred every week or two, like okay. you slowly work because your body adapts, right? Okay. Hey, I have a little more energy. I'm going to produce a little more heat. I'm going to give up, you know, and what those carbs are doing is they're getting stored in as glycogen, right? So it goes mm -hmm. a little more fuel into the muscle. Our body can make its own glycogen from the, from the protein, but you're assisting it. You're putting a little more in there. And, uh, I, I also, if you're trying to maximize muscle growth is those amino acids, like right. eat, probably eat the same amount of meat, but then good. Take some EAAs, you know, a, it, it can't hurt. Let's put it that way. Right, right, right. If anything. Yeah. Because, and that's what I did for my, my deficit too, is because I've been trying to lose weight for a while, but when I started working with someone, I noticed the difference because he's like, let's start you off at 2100, which is a really slight deficit. And then I was like, Oh my God, that's so much fit. Like so, it's a very small deficit for me, but I I'm active. And yeah. then it was like a slow drop down of calories. Cause he's like, you cannot, like, you cannot do this. Like dramatically it's going to be too much for you so now we drop down and I'm leaning out a lot but then I always think like how am I going to get because I'm thinking ahead right so and, and, and really quick the last thing I want to say on that is is that <clears throat> there's a it's a myth that you can't build muscle unless you're in a surplus mm -hmm. it's complete crap um it's the protein it's the protein the, that's why I say it. we'll throw in extra aminos right and it comes down to the training so the reason why people have connected that the surplus means more muscle, like directly, is because usually when you have the surplus, you can train harder. Mm -hmm. So it actually comes down to your training. It comes down to your, your heavy lifting that stimulates in your body. We need to grow. Okay. Right. So, and as long as you have the building blocks, sugar is not connected to this process. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a acid and the stimulus okay okay now, the carbs that that little extra carb or that little extra calorie from fat whether you go fat or carb on it is going to allow you to train an extra rep or two causing a little more damage causing a little more growth right right okay that's per sorry this is like my like i i love to call it like my meat like i my meat and potatoes because i go crazy when i can talk to someone about this so i I will stop selfishly asking about myself, but like, let's talk about other people that you've done this with. Like one more thing for you. Cause you, it was something that you had, you had a good question about the protein shake or something. Oh yes. I just never got to answer that one. And, and it's, I got, I've been asked that a lot and here's my simple answer to it. Keep it very short. If you're cutting, don't have a protein shake in my opinion. Okay. Have amino acids and hydrate and like get electrolyzed. So my, like, for instance, my drink is perfect for somebody who's trying to cut as much fat as possible while still keeping enough fuel for those muscles. Now, if you're trying to gain, you need more calories, maybe a whey protein, a grass fed or a grass fed beef protein, actually probably more ideal would be a supplement that now you're adding a couple hundred calories. Anyways, that's just the simplicity of okay. that. Thank you. I appreciate all the information because I will pick your brain. Till the sun goes down but anyway people you you train tons of people too you have you do you have your own gym yeah yeah well it's actually my so it's my brother's gym it's called bulletproof athletics i'm also connected with athletic truth group atg so i've basically trained between those two over the last yeah what i mean i've been training since i was 18 i remember my first client i was 18 years old so it's been 15 years good lord 
Um, <laughs> so 15 years now, those first five years, it was a couple of clients, you know, I didn't have a lot. And then obviously as the gym gone, I've thousands through the first gym. There's been thousands in this other gym. Then I've done some online, I had a little bit of adventure online. I actually basically ATG and my brother at Bulletproof just have such good online program. And I was like, I don't even need to do it. Like I'll just refer people to that. I'm going to focus on supplements and diet because that's where I find <clears throat> I have the most ability to help. Right. So I, I wanted, I needed to choose. I was like, I can do program. I can do training. I can do this. I can do that. I was like, where do I find my best ability to help? And I think that's through like meal plans and supplements basically. So. And now have you, I, we, we chatted a little bit about this, how you, you've taken people and kind of put them on this like animal based meat heavy. What are like your favorite standout success stories? Because I think that it's a testament and people will say, well, it's anecdotal. You can't, you can't say this, you can't say that, but there are some stories that are just so spectacular that they're worthy of, you know, telling because it does have value and it's a testament to the, the diet. Yeah, it is. I, I have, it's a good question. I have two that popped in my head first. Okay. So, um, the first one is this guy, I, I told you it was about 300 pounds. He's a, actually a good friend of mine. And, um, it's kind of heartwarming. It almost makes me a little emotional because he was, he had fatty liver disease and he was actually kind of scared, right? He's not an old, he's maybe 40 years old around. I think he's 40 and he was very overweight and had this fatty liver disease issue. And, and he would, he was emotional about his health. He was like, I I'm, I'm actually worried. Right. And so I took him on and, and, you know, it was, uh, it was like an adventure. Like it was very hard for him to get off the car. Sugar is a drug. It's mm -hmm. nature's drug. And a little bit is fine maybe, but man, when you get addicted to that, it is, it is the hardest thing to quit. My, my dad says a good thing. He's like, I know a lot of people that have rehabbed and quit drugs. He's like, I know very few people that have quit sugar. It, it's very hard to do. So going through that process was actually like a detox. It was like emotional. He would cry. It was very hard for him. And, and we just, you know, just kept showing up every day, every day. And it was amazing. Like I didn't even get him on a special diet. I said, let's just start moving your body and just eat a little more protein. If you, if you're going to cheat, like I didn't make it, I'm not dogmatic and religious about diet. I don't, I hate when people go, well, no, I'm animal based. So if you have a, a vegetable or if you have a, a fruit, you're, you're, I shun you. That, that's so silly to me. And that, unfortunately I won't say his name because he's very popular, but there's a couple guys like that out there. And I just, I don't like that attitude. Let's put it that way. So, um, so I just, we just slowly, right. Step by step. And he blinked and it was like 10 pounds lost. He's like, Oh my God. And the next thing you know, he did it for another, like, was it three, four? Like I said, so basically it was probably more like five, six weeks. He had lost 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, he just, his whole life, it was actually like, and he, I have emotional texts. I mean, he's like, you saved my life. I mean, it's just, that's the type of stuff. I was just like, man, like you can't, I'm like, you did it. He did it. You know, I, I, I'm just humbled and honored to be able to help him do it himself. You know what I mean? And so like, that's probably one of my favorite stories, particularly because I care about it. And then my, my favorite story is my dad. <laughs> my dad, I mean, you got to see this post. I mean, it's like my dad's 70 years old, looks like me. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like he, he had been on TRT for five. So people go, oh, what's because he's on? No, he had been on TRT for five years. He'd been trying to fix his thyroid for five years with medication. And he made some improvement from those things, but he was like 30 pounds, 40 pounds overweight still. And he had health issues and all these things. Never been able to do a pull up in his life, in his life. He was a master, like champion karate athlete in the seventies. I mean, he couldn't do pull up. Like it was crazy. Right. So he, he's just, um, and if you see him now, I mean, he is, he's shred, like, he's like shredded. He's like, he's in incredible shape. He's doing pull ups at 70 years old for the first time in his life. We've helped, I helped fix his rib flare. Okay. He, which is a very hard thing to do with. I can't guarantee that these exercises are going to, but you know, just his whole body is transforming. He, he had a Sean Baker talks about this. It was like, um, 
he had this giant like cyst, like calcium deposit from a, from a, from a surgery, the appendix surgery that he had, that it was there for 40 years. It's gone. He's like, I don't, how at 70 years old is my body healing? He's been carnivore for 10 months. I mean, he's die hard. He, he's so, he looks at carbs and goes, ew, that's disgusting. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I love, I mean, I just love him. He's, he, he's actually an inspiration. And now it's like, teaching me things about carnivore you know what i mean like he's so just on it and um yeah so like just the ability to see i i 10 years ago i thought my dad had 10 20 years left to live i think he has he is far younger and has more life now than i've ever seen him and it's just that's obviously very special for me so those are my two favorite anecdotal um success stories with a carnivore diet yeah that's it i'm here like my eyes are welling up and I've had goosebumps the whole I time. See it. I know I'm like, don't let him fall. I'm such a cry baby, but no, that's like, Oh, it's just so amazing. Like that just warms my black heart. Well, and I think like the, I think the two, Oh, sorry guys. I think the two things like I take out of that is like, number one, when people comment on things and go, Oh my God, you're making your whole diet, your life. Like when your whole, when your diet is your whole lifestyle. And I'm like, well, yeah, like it's, it's a game changer when you've been chronically ill or overweight for 20 years or, you know, all these things and you eat something and it changes your life. Like, of course it becomes like part of your personality. Like it really does. And then the other thing is, is like number two, the body's innate ability to heal itself when you eat the right foods, no matter how old you are, that we are equipped to physically repair over and over and over and over again and not deteriorate, you know, and no matter how old you are, when you do finally give your body the proper, the proper food, it, it doesn't matter. It'll just, it has this really crazy ability to just improve and heal itself. I agree. I mean, my dad is that example for me. I go, there's just no, no doubt to me. Like, and for somebody at 70, I do say go basically carnivore. I mean, okay, mm -hmm. maybe a little relaxed, but like, because at that point, what do you, there is no perform, like you're just trying to live longer and with high quality. It's not about sitting in a chair for 10 extra years. Mm -hmm. My dad is literally more physically able than he was 10, 20 years ago. It's like, and he, and he was an athlete. He was, and he was already an athlete. So like, the, ability, the fact that he's more athletic in some ways at 70 than when he was when he was 30 is like mind blowing to me. And it's, it's all the diet. It's all the diet. It makes me wonder for people because I'm only 30. So I've been doing this for, I've been carnivore for about a year. I was keto for four, four or five years um, before, but it makes me wonder like, if I eat this way for the rest of my life, how long am I going to be able to live? You know, because dad talks about that. He's like, yeah. he's like, man, I don't even understand. Like, he's like, you're going to be 60. I'm like, I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's pretty amazing. I was like, if you can look like this at 70, I was like, he's like, he says, I feel pretty good now about how I look. Like, I'm telling you, he's like buff. It's wild. Um, and he's like, I don't understand what you're going to look like at 70. I was like, yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting. I I'm determined to look like I'm 30 for the next 20 years. That's See? like what I'm hoping to get out of this. So I like it. I like Courtney, it. do you have any questions? No, I think that was awesome. I think we should just have him tell everybody where we can find him. And then after and that, we can ask what? In the supplement line too. Yeah. Because that's super new so and then you can ask the fun questions when he's done <laughs> so you want to go ahead we have three fun questions we always ask everyone that are like not carnivore related or food related but do you want to tell us where we can find you your um your supplement line um where you're located so if people want to come find you they can okay so Okay, we'll start with the gym. So my brother's gym, it's an incredible gym. Um, it's called Bulletproof Athletics. It's in Clearwater, Florida. Um, if you just go to his Instagram page, Bulletproof Athletics, all that information's there. Um, my page is Fueled by Fern. That's on TikTok. I'm not very active on TikTok. I need to be better. But on Instagram is my main channel, um, starting YouTube, et cetera. But Fueled by Fern. Um, 
And then I just go over a lot of lifestyle tips and diet tips and just little training. It's like a little bit of a mixture of everything about fitness. And really I'm, I'm allow I'm allowing that to grow to wherever people ask questions, you know, it's just like whatever it naturally goes to. And then, um, my, my new supplement line is it's, uh, called Serpo nutrition. Okay. So that's S U R P O nutrition.com. And it stands, it's actually short for survival potentials. And the reason I put the S on potentials, which is a weird grammar, people go, oh, that, that's wrong, it's survival potential. I believe there's many areas where one can improve their survival, okay? It's not, so it's, it's the potentials, the different potentials is how I'm using that. And, and um, you know, whether it's a lifestyle, sleeping better, supplementing, eating better, working out, they're, they're all different potentials in my opinion. So survival potentials, serponutrition.com. I have that, it's called amino hydrate. It's amino acids and electrolytes, uh, full doses, no sugar, you know, all that stuff. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Okay, awesome. And we will have all of that linked down in the comments. Um, and to finish up, we have three fun questions that have nothing to do with anything that we talked about. But number one, what is your favorite curse word? Oh, wow. Dang, I've never been asked that. Uh, <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, Just, it, I can't I, use the F word. That's, I can't say that's, that's, too, that's too easy. That's too easy. <laughs> you know, so I'm Cuban. My family's from Cuba. I was born in Miami. I'm first generation American. And I used to actually, when I, it's called maricon. It's actually probably my favorite. It's so strong. It's called maricon. It's, it's a very bad word. Um, and it's just, Sometimes when I get really angry, my Spanish comes out from five years old. I'm like, Marty, boom, and I just turn into a little mini Cuban. So that's probably my favorite one. Okay. That's different than anything we've had. Usually, I think 90% of the people we've asked say the F word. Yeah, it's um, gotta be. It's the most common for sure. It's the best for sure. And then number two, uh, what is your favorite non-healthy food? Ooh. It's, it's a quick to two um it's between a really good ice cream like talenti probably right now the the one with the layers so before <laughs> I, like when i'm when i break my diet like the last time i was really the last time i had this is actually almost a year ago um but man that one would crush me when i get addicted to that it's game over but then also just a good pizza i i I'm just obsessed. I, I do love pizza. It's like the one thing that I will forever have a cheat meal eventually, like every once in a while on, because that's just how I grew up. It's kind of like sentimental for me. I used to have pizza with my dad and, you know, it's like, yeah. If I cheat, it's going to be for ice cream or it's going to be for pizza or a quesadilla. Those are like the only quesadilla things. Quesadilla is I good will, too. <laughs> yeah, those are the only things I will cheat for, but those are my favorite foods. Yeah. Good food and then food. I'm not around a lot I, in Clearwater. They don't have it. But in my, when I go to Miami, not always, like I did in the last few times seeing my dad, because now he's on that carnivore diet. So now we're just eating giant ribeyes together. But before that, like a good, a good croqueta and some Cuban food, man. Oof, that was, that was a tough one. Yeah. I feel that I lived in Florida for two years and I dream about the food. So I understand that completely. I would absolutely break my carnivore diet to go back and eat that stuff. Um, and then the last one, what are you currently watching or reading? Watching or reading? I'm reading Alex Hermosi's book, his first book. Do you know who Alex Hermosi is? Mm -mm. This guy is amazing. Um, he's very, very big and popular and famous and all that. And he's a, he's a, he actually was a basically broke, the way I understand he was a broke personal trainer. And then he started, <laughs> <laughs> he started I find a lot in common with him and everything he says is like wow I feel like this guy's my brother like it's a pretty amazing but he's he's where I want to be mm -hmm. um and so you guys should check him out he's a pretty inspirational but very real he's like what's the book called the book is called it's 90 100 million dollar deal but just look up Alex Hermosi um he's a pretty inspirational I think any of your viewers if they don't know him would would love him um he came from basically broke personal trainer grew that started to just and he's just 
kind of won that whole game, started helping other gyms expand. Then he had a supplement line and now he's in business acquisition. Now he makes a hundred million a year. You know, he's like a totally, but he's just so real and basically just tells you how he did it. And I, I love that. So that's, that's someone and, and something I'm reading and then watching. I haven't watched a lot of TV recently since my supplement line came out. I don't have time. Um, but I, I, I'm obsessed with movies. I have the AMC uh, pass. So I get to like, I pay 25 bucks a month and I get to watch as many. So basically any movie that comes out once a week, I go and sit in the theater alone and watch movies. <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for letting me pick your brain. I hope my selfish questions help someone who is. So, yeah. So, people are going to have the same questions. So it's, it's, so I, I, I appreciate them. They were good questions. Yeah, I feel like always having that personal experience too, like, or, you know, just other people can relate to it, Kevin. So that was like totally fine having that like example. So you're good. You're good. Right. So awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Great. Thank you Bye. so much.